good day, folks. Thank you for joining us here at Your Health. Dr. David Brownstein, the thyroid doctor, joins us again today. Today we want to talk about iodine. Are you getting enough iodine in your diet? We want to talk about his book, Iodine, Why You Need It and Why You Can't Live Without It. You know, this one is so fascinating. I could not put this book down while I was reading it to prepare for this show. And I know you're going to be fascinated by it, too. But it's more than just fascination. The topic of this show will empower you to improve your health. I promise you that. I promise you that. So please stay with us for this program today, Iodine. Is that salt giving you enough? Well, we'll find out from the program. But first, let's go to our news, see what's happening in the health world. Doctors are diagnosing significantly more children with type 1 diabetes in the Philadelphia area. Researchers from the University of Pennsylvania have been tracking childhood diabetes rates since 1985. Their study discovered a 70% increase in cases of type 1 diabetes. The data showed the greatest increase among African American girls under the age of 5. Folks, this is immensely troubling. Now keep in mind we're talking about type 1 diabetes. That's the insulin-dependent autoimmune type of diabetes. And it has increased dramatically in all the children of Philadelphia, but most remarkably among young African-American girls. This phenomenon does not appear to be related to obesity or high fructose corn syrup. And the authors of this study did not put forth a theory as to why the trend is occurring. However, a recent Harvard study conducted on young military recruits found low levels of vitamin D increase the risk of type 1 diabetes in young adults. Previous research has shown in children, those who consume the most omega-3 fatty acids had the lowest risk of type 1 diabetes. Perhaps the upward trend of insulin-dependent diabetes in Philadelphia is being caused by a combination of factors. Low vitamin D, low omega-3s, and perhaps environmental pollution unique to that area. Well, we just don't know at this time. But this physician is, however, confident that vitamin D, the essential omega-3 fatty acids, and environmental pollution will undoubtedly be involved. There may be new help for people with fatty liver disease. In animal studies, researchers at Oregon State University discovered that the omega-3 fatty acid, docosahexaenoic acid, or DHA, is remarkably effective in reversing fatty liver disease. The American Liver Foundation estimates that one in four Americans has non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and its numbers are on the rise. They also report of those with fatty liver disease, up to 40% will go on to develop non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or NASH, a precursor to liver cirrhosis. Folks, fatty liver disease is a real threat to America due to our expanding waistline. And if even a fraction of these souls with fatty liver disease go on to develop NASH and liver cirrhosis, it will greatly tax our already burdened healthcare system. It is fascinating to learn that DHA could help us solve this problem. Previous research has shown that the omega-3 DHA at doses of 200 to 500 milligrams a day is very effective in preventing cardiovascular disease and even dementia. But this study from Oregon State University found in order to reverse fatty liver disease and prevent fibrosis of the liver, it takes two to four grams of DHA daily. That's much higher than the heart disease prevention plan. Now, to help you formulate a more complete plan to combat the effects of obesity on the liver, consider also adding regular exercise, weight loss, and the complete exclusion of high fructose corn syrup from the diet. Add more fiber, and start a quality multivitamin and mineral complete with higher doses of vitamin D and of course milk thistle and probiotics. Now you have a holistic plan to help prevent disabling liver disease. Well today on Your Health, Dr. David Brownstein joins us. He is here to discuss an often overlooked nutrient, iodine. What's your status? Are you getting enough? And what is the best source of iodine? Is table salt enough? Well, we will attempt to answer these questions and more. Join us, we'll be right back.